Hello, 大家好 Let's read The Empress and the Silkworm. Nearly five thousand years ago, Huangdi, known as the Yellow Emperor, ruled the ancient land of China. He and his wife Xi Lingshi lived in an enormous palace with a golden roof. Its pillars were carved with the image of the mighty dragon, symbol of the emperor's strength. Around the palace were gardens and a vast grove of mulberry trees. The empress loved to stroll through the gardens each morning. From time to time, she caught a glimpse of the phoenix resting upon the palace roof. Everyone knew that to see this bird was a blessing, a sign of good fortune. On one such lucky morning, Xi Lingshi was enjoying the shade of the mulberry trees when her maid servant arrived, carrying a tray of delicious mooncakes and hot tea. Tea time, she sang as she placed the tray at Xi Lingshi's feet. Oh, they smell so sweet," said the empress. "I can't wait to taste one." She picked up the cake, but as she reached for her teacup, plop! Something splashed right into it. "Aya!" screamed the maid servant, wrinkling her nose in disgust. "What is it?" asked Xi Lingshi. "I don't know," said the maid servant, shuddering. "I will bring you a fresh cup." No, wait," the empress said. She leaned forward to examine the tea. Her eyes grew large with excitement as she saw what was floating on top. It was small and round and white. It was a cocoon. She had seen the tiny worms in the mulberry trees spin these tight blankets around themselves. In the hot tea. The cocoon was beginning to unwind. She took it out and pulled the loose end gently. The cocoon seemed to be made of a fine, shiny thread. Please, Your Highness, the maid servant begged, leave that wormy thing alone. The Empress did not reply, but began to uncoil the strand. Look, she said. This thread is so light it's almost invisible. It is like a thread fallen from heaven. Come help me unravel it. From morning to evening, the two unwound the cocoon. They were careful not to break the thread or make a hopeless tangle. At last, they reached the end. Xi Lingshi held the silvery thread up in the moonlight. See how it glistens! She exclaimed. But it is so delicate. If we had more strands, we could twist them together to make one thick thread. Go, bring other servants to help us. So through the night, Xi Lingshi and the servants worked, plucking cocoons from the mulberry trees, soaking them in hot tea, and unwinding them. Then they joined all the strands into a single fiber. The moon hung low in the sky when Xi Lingshi, exhausted, lay down to rest. While she slept, she had a wonderful dream. She saw the fiery dragon and the proud phoenix rising like the sun. She saw her husband standing among the clouds. He was dressed in a shimmering yellow robe that flowed like the rivers of heaven. The cloth was so beautiful that she knew. It could only have been woven from the shining thread of the mulberry cocoon. When she woke, she knew exactly what she was going to do. At noon, there was great excitement at the palace. The ladies of the court had formed a procession, a mile long. Each gently held part of the miraculous thread. It took a thousand women. Just to keep it from touching the ground, the gong was struck. One by one, the ladies of the court entered the room where the emperor sat, surrounded by his advisers. The women paraded the empress's treasure before the throne. 
Then Si Ling Shi approached, holding a tray. Upon it were a caterpillar, a mulberry leaf, a cocoon, and a cup of hot tea. What are these things? asked the emperor. And what are your servants carrying? I will show you, most honorable husband, she replied. As the emperor and his advisers watched, she dipped the cocoon into the hot tea. The advisers began to laugh. And this makes the tea taste better, your highness, observed the one with the round belly. Another joked, perhaps it makes the caterpillar taste better. Slowly, the empress began to draw the lustrous strand from the cocoon. A hush fell over the court as the strand grew longer. Then, Xi Ling Shi told the story of her discovery. An advisor with a long beard inspected the tiny worm. Who could imagine, he said, that something so great could come from something so small? Ah, look how the thread shimmers in the light, exclaimed another. It is as fine as smoke, yet strong as bronze, cried a third. Then the round-bellied one said, Yes, this is truly wonderful, but why should we concern ourselves with it? The empress told her dream, how she had seen the yellow emperor clothed in a robe woven from the heavenly thread. For a moment, there was silence. Then Huang Di smiled at his wife and said, What a splendid idea! We shall weave a cloth more beautiful than the world has ever seen. Because of this treasure, our kingdom shall be as heaven on earth. I command that none outside this land be told the secret of this noble worm and its precious gift. With the rising sun, Xi Ling Shi went to work overseeing the production of the cloth. Imperial gardeners planted more groves of mulberry trees. Young worms were placed on trays. Each day, fresh leaves were picked and cut to feed them. Royal craftsmen made reels to unwind the cocoons and combine the strands. They built looms to weave the thread into fabric. Many moons passed before the young empress saw the fruits of her labor. At last, on the morning of the Autumn Moon Festival, the crowd gathered in front of the palace. The great gong sounded, and the red lacquer doors burst open. The people gasped as Huang Di stepped out into the light. Wrapped in a billowing robe of radiant yellow, he shone like a sun. It was as the empress had dreamed. From that day, the fabric was called silk. Soon, Xi Ling Shi was known throughout the kingdom as the Lady of the Silkworm. The origin of the heavenly cloth became one of the greatest secrets of all time. For almost 3,000 years, only the Chinese knew about the little worm that fed on mulberry leaves and spun the beautiful, magical threads of silk. Let's learn some Chinese vocabulary. China, Zhongguo, Zhongguo, Zhongguo. The Yellow Emperor, Huang Di, Huang Di, Huang Di. Xi Ling Shi, also known as Lei Zu. Xi Ling Shi, Xi Ling Shi, Xi Ling Shi. Or Lei Zu, Lei Zu, Lei Zu. Mooncakes, Yue Bing, Yue Bing, Yue Bing. Mulberry tree, Sang Shu. Sang Shu, Sang Shu. Thread, Xian, Xian, Xian.
glisten, 闪亮，闪亮，闪亮。Dream, 梦，梦，梦。A cup of hot tea, 一杯热茶，一杯热茶，一杯热茶。A caterpillar, 一只。蚕宝宝，一只蚕宝宝，一只蚕宝宝。A mulberry leaf， 一片桑叶，一片桑叶，一片桑叶。A cocoon， 一个蚕茧，一个蚕茧。一个蚕茧。Long beard， 长须，长须，长须。What a splendid idea！ 这主意妙极了。这主意妙极了。这主意妙极了。Fresh leaf。新鲜的树叶，新鲜的树叶，新鲜的树叶。Silk， 丝绸，丝绸，丝绸。The lady of the silkworm， 先蚕圣母，先蚕圣母，先蚕圣母。